Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Today we are at the Stansted Airport in London and if you haven't done so already there is a link down below for the add-on for this airport. It is magnificent. If this is your first time joining us on the channel, I would love to welcome you and highly suggest you go down below, hit that subscribe button, take that little bell, and smash the thumbs up button. You do not want to miss any future videos like this one. Speaking of this video today, we are going to be programming our flight plan into the FMS in the G3000-5000 unit in the Cessna Citation Longitude. Links below for the G3000 working title mod as well as the FDE fix for the longitude mod. So check all those out and it really adds a layer of realism to the aircraft. I don't know what this guy's doing, but uh, looks like he's driving through the wing. All right, in any case, let's hop in here and uh, we're going to uh, just get some power going so that we can show you how to program the FMS. Alrighty, now that we're in the cockpit of the Longitude, and what a mighty fine cockpit she be, all we need to do is to get some power going here. So we're going to flip on our standby power and tick our left and right batteries, as well as the external power, because we're not going to be firing up the APU today. And by the way, if you haven't seen our cold and dark startup of the Cessna Citation Longitude, I will also go ahead and put a link down below so you can click on that to find out how to get this bird started up. This video is solely focused on entering our flight plan into the FMS, uh, and we may get into a couple other little goodies. All right, so firstly, I want to show everybody the flight plan that we're going to be entering today into the FMS, uh, which is right here from Simbrief. We are going to be uh, departing EGSS to EGAA uh, to runway 07. So as you see, we have a ton of airways in here. So we're going to show you how to do this from scratch. And also, we're going to show you a little tip or trick. If you don't have a Navigraph subscription, uh, and it will not automatically populate all of your flight altitude restrictions. So we're going to give you a little tip on how to get those in there as well. Firstly, uh, to start off, we're going to go ahead to the flight plan menu. And as you see, we are with a clean slate. We're going to add the origin, which is EGSS. Bada bing, bada boom. We tap it, tap the destination of EGAA and slippity slough we got it in there ready to go so now the next thing we need to do we have a departure that we're going to enter so we hit the procedures the departure and if you look at this right here looks we are looks like we're going to be taking the UTAVA 1R departure so we go to departures we scroll down to that departure right there it's runway 22 as we're leaving if you want to see a cool preview you can hit show on map and it will show you a nice little preview on the map so before you do anything make sure you hit that off and then hit the load button it will then load that into your flight plan and as you see there are no flight restrictions so we're going to show you an easy way to get those all right, so if you're not using Navigraph, that's not going to populate in for you. So what I like to use is ChartFox. So if you go on ChartFox, you can actually look up all the different approach plates. And then you can go on that approach plate and enter all of your altitude restrictions in manually into the FMS that we have right here. So for instance, uh, all you would do is you would left click on that, enter your flight restriction, hit enter, and there you go. So it's pretty simple. All right, so the next thing uh, we're going to do is scroll down because uh, we are going to be entering an airway from UTAVA. Now we're not going to click on that. We're just going to click on the end route button right here. If you click on add end route waypoint, what it's going to give you is this screen. So if you're going to go a direct route to somewhere, you can go ahead and use this. Uh, you could also put in the airway and I believe it will just take you back to the airway screen. In any case, all we got to do is hit the left on en route. There's the load airway button. Okay, and we are going to be taking the Q75 airway. 
and you hit exit which will be the exit waypoint on the Q75 and that is going to be Buzzad B-U-Z-A-D and there it is so we hit load airway and it now loads that airway in for you alright so next from Buzzad we're actually going to be taking another airway the T420 so we're going to click on Buzzad now left click and hit load airway and we're going to go to the T420 and our exit off of that is TNT we're going to hit TNT load airway and there we go so now we've loaded all of that in uh, from TNT we're going to jump on the Q4 so we're going to do the same thing again hit Q4 and our exit on uh, this one is going to be WAL and we're just going to scroll down and oh, we pass it till you hit WAL hit load airway and bada bing bada boom there we go she's in there uh, I believe we got uh, two more here so we're going to jump on another airway which is going to be the M146 and we're going to be exiting this at Ipset right there hit load airway on that one gravy and we have one more airway to enter so we're going to enter that airway from Ipset the airway is the M146 I'm sorry we're going to be entering the airway P6 and the exit is at Bell. Hit load airway and there we go. Now another cool feature because you don't want to have all these open all the time it, it seems like a lot. If you click on any one of these airways you left click on it you can hit collapse all and it will now collapse all of those airways down for you. So the very last thing is we are going to enter our approach so we just need to go to procedures approach we're going to be on the VOR 7 approach with the bell transition. If you want to preview that as well, you can go ahead and hit preview on map. It will show you up there. Just make sure you go hit that off and slap that load. Do not hit activate. And that is it. If you'd like to see the entire flight plan, you can go flight plan options, hit show on map, look up, and there's your entire flight plan in the FMS now. Make sure you unclick on that and you are good to go. And again, so what you would want to do for all of your flight altitude restrictions is you can get those right off the approach plates and then just enter those in right like so. And one of the reasons that you want to do that is because this FMS or GPS unit has a cool little feature that uh, if you click on VNAV you can enable that VNAV and it will give you the path that you need to take the required vertical speed uh, the time to the bottom of descent and it tries to keep you on a three degree angle downwards alright and it will see right here it shows that that would be our waypoint that we need to hit down and then on the screen right here you will also have a couple things populate for your V path so it really helps out, but you have to manually go on that V-Path. It's not going to automatically uh, take you down on that V-Path for you. So we go back here to the main menu. There's a couple other cool things here that you can uh, turn on. Uh, one being the traffic. So if you turn on your traffic map right there, if you hit the traffic button again, you can now turn on the different features of the traffic map. So I can turn that on. As you see, we don't really have any traffic here at the moment. You can also turn that in weather mode by hitting the weather button and if you tap on that weather button one more time it can bring you up to some settings. Make sure you, if you want to use it you turn the radar on and you turn it to weather. You have two different modes horizontal and vertical. I like using the vertical mode. Uh, this way I can see if I'm in between some layers of clouds. You want to get the map back on just go ahead and tap on the map and it will bring your map back up. Some of you might be noticing this down here, and this gives our active legs that we're on at the moment, and also a cool VNAV profile right here. To turn that on, all you want to do is go to your map settings, go to inset window, and it is right there. You can also adjust the level of your map detail right here, uh, and that will either add or subtract to the amount of stuff 
that you see on your map in front of you. There's a couple other features. I just leave these to standard, and that would be it. If you want to have terrain, you can turn your terrain on or off right there. So the other cool feature that the G3000-5000 unit has is we can split screen here now. So if you hit the half button, it will split screen. But before you try to make any changes on this side, you got to go to this center knob here and just click it once so that it will switch to this side. And then you can turn your traffic map on this side or your weather map on this side. Keep in mind that you may need to go back in here and reset some of these settings when you do so. And now you can have both of these running at the same time, side by side. When you're finished with it, all you need to do is hit the full half button, goes back to a full screen, and there you go. One other thing that is pretty handy while you're in your flight plans, uh, especially if you're doing an ILS approach, you need to know the frequency of the ILS. So all you have to do is go to your actual arrival airport, if you left click on that it will bring you up to a waypoint info so on this information chart it will show you some elevations which is very handy um, it will also show you some distances bearings and all that kind of stuff but the main thing is if you go to and runways main thing is if you go to frequencies uh, you can then scroll down and to go to all of the frequencies listed for this airport and if you were coming in on an ILS, it's so simple. All you have to do is just left click on the frequency and click whichever nav computer you want it to be in, either active or standby. You can left click on that and it automatically puts that into your nav computer. You don't have to go look it up on charts. Very handy feature. You can also get to that same menu right from the waypoint info button on the front screen. All you got to do is hit airport and there it is. The other thing that we have right here is our speed bugs. If you tap on the speed bugs, I like to turn all these on for takeoff. Once you're in mid-flight, you can hit all off, go to landing, and turn those on. And that will bring all of your speed bugs over here, as you can see right there. It has the approach already on there for our approach speed. And if we turn those off and go to takeoff, same thing will also populate. Okay. So that takes care of the speed bugs and the waypoint. Uh, utilities, well, this is if you want to customize some of the settings, uh, if you want to change your time format. Also the units, uh, depending on where you are in the world, you may want to change your units that the uh, GPS uses. And then you can also adjust the MFD fields. I leave all those factory. Now, if you do have a Navigraph subscription, all you need to do is go to Database Status, and then you can enter, I believe you just click on this to go enter your Navigraph information in there. I don't have it. I do it the uh, cheap way. <laughs> so um, that pretty much takes care of everything on the MFD screen here. Oh, if you do want to do a direct to flight, you can just click on this right from here. Select your waypoint that you want to go to. Uh, do a direct flight right to it. So that's pretty easy. You can also go to, if you're in your flight plan menu, uh, you can also do the same thing by just left clicking on that and do direct right to that waypoint. So there's many different options uh, with this GPS. Um, and also, yeah, there is one other thing I wanted to touch on, which is the nav radios. Though maybe a little bit hard to get to the nav uh, radios uh, compared to the comms, because the comms are right here. To get to your nav radios, you got to left click on the auto audio and radio button up here. And right here, it will now bring up all of your nav information. So you kind of got to go through a bunch of different screens to get to that nav information. Uh, that's why when programming that ILS information, it's really handy to just be able to go right here. Hit what we want, hit activate, hit activate, and it's done. So um, pretty simple, easy. That's all there is to it. Our flight plan is now loaded, and you can also see that our altitude flight restrictions do get populated. As you're flying, you will also have some fuel information, ETAs, the leg times, all kinds of different stuff. Really cool little informational panel that they allow you to put in here uh, to show all your different legs. All right, so uh, I think that is it for today. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead and post them down below in the comments. 
If you haven't done so already, I highly suggest you go down, hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel, lets us know we're doing a good job. And as always, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one.